Founded in 2001, and the Avishkar Group today manages nearly $1 billion. I caught up with Vineet Rai to understand from him why he believes that impact investment is really going to change the future and why he looks at those areas or industries that not too many people would be open to lending to and also what the future roadmap is looking like for a group that has seen exponential growth over the past couple of years. Take a listen. It's so good having you here in our studios uh, talking about something that's very crucial for entrepreneurs, very close to the heart of any entrepreneur, uh, and that's of course funding and what's really going on when it comes to funding for India's small businesses. So it's exciting to have you here, you know, discussing that with us. My question too is uh, if you can start by talking about your journey behind setting up of the Avishkar Group. You're the only one of, uh, you know, your kind in the sense of the scale of businesses that you look at, the range of businesses you look at when it comes to lending. Uh, where did that idea for that come about? What's that journey been like? So I'm a forester by training. I was in a forest in Orissa and then of course I got married. My wife didn't find the forest as enchanting. So I came out of forest, went to IMM the world, spent a year there. Mm -hmm. And then I set up India's first, probably first agri incubator for the government of Gujarat. Sure. Uh, by the time I turned 29, that was three years by the time I was running this incubator, uh, I realized that if you really want to make an impact and change India, you have to allow entrepreneurs to flourish in every nook and corner of India. So I was looking, focusing on rural India, and for that you require risk capital, mm -hmm. and you require talent, and mm -hmm. capital and talent flows to cities and not to villages. So I thought I would be the guy who will start India's first rural venture fund. Okay. So I started Avishkar as a fund in 2001 and started a company called Intellicap, Intellectual Capital sure. in 2002. The journey was very challenging, like any startup entrepreneur. I did not know how to find rich people. I had never met rich people. I was not a finance guy, so. It took me five years to reach five crore, which was a very large sum when I started off with my 5,000. But uh, when I reached five crore, I realized it's too small. Uh, since then, uh, it's been a journey of learning and change. We have made 70 investments, but at the same time as an entrepreneur uh, who has raised close to 1.2 billion or dollars uh, over the period, which is roughly 8,000, 8,500 crores, mm -hmm. uh, we started uh, building multiple areas and verticals. Because we realized entrepreneurs are of different kinds. Some people require equity, which are very scalable businesses. But those who are actually doing uh, daily businesses require working capital. Sure. They don't have collateral to offer. They don't have, uh, uh, they don't have uh, their businesses are very thin margin. So you need to then innovate. So we started a cash flow lending business called Intelligro. Mm -hmm. uh, we started a fintech business called Tribe. And then we picked up a microfinance company, a very small company. And we have scaled it 100 times in the last seven years in northeast, north and east of India. And the idea was to demonstrate technology can play a significant role in changing the way you deal with poor and low income people. Okay. So that's our story. Uh, what you call stupidity, uh, most experts would call passion and that's required in a uh, huge measure when it comes to entrepreneurs. My question to you is what has this journey perhaps taught you? To use this interview to talk to small businesses watching the interview to say, this has been my biggest learning, given that you've built this entire business ground up. Passion is important, but perseverance is probably 100 times more important. Most people don't have the stamina to last. So they are thinking it's a 100 meter race. Uh, this is an unending marathon and you are almost always under the pump. So if you are not having a mental strength to deal with these challenges, uh, you will get found out sooner or later. Uh, I think the second thing which uh, one needs to understand is in the world of entrepreneurship, whether you are a small entrepreneur or a startup or an entrepreneur with big ambitions, uh, they must remember that out of 1,000 people who become an entrepreneur, or maybe 10,000 people or maybe a million people, one actually becomes that case study or story which inspires you. Mm -hmm. uh, so you must celebrate success every day. Whatever you achieve, whatever, wherever you've gone, you should feel proud and successful of what you've achieved. Because as an entrepreneur, your story never ends. You'll have to continue to run. Uh, let's talk the big picture when it comes to then financing and lending here in the country. And my first question is, what according to you is the one big thing that's going wrong in India today when it comes to lending to small businesses? First is the issue that uh, most of us are struggling to crack the code of how do you deal with an entrepreneur who is almost always on the treadmill with a very thin margin and is trying to make ends meet at the same time have large 
buyers on the other side. So, I mean, you also heard it that the government PSUs are actually one of the I think finance minister went on record saying the PSU should meet their uh, obligations in the shortest period of time yeah. specifically. So, it, what happens is when you have a big buyer and a small vendor, chances of uh, people actually honoring their commitments to the small buyer uh, is low, which essentially means that the entrepreneur is always in a stress. Mm -hmm. Now, this stress is mitigated by taking loans, and uh, these loans normally come in as working capital. Uh, now, when you have a thin margin business, which has a very large buyer on the other side who actually can dictate terms, and you are taking loans which are uh, high in cost, uh, any disruption in the economy is going to impact uh, the business. So now, sure. cash flow based lending uh, is an art which very few people know. Uh, most investors or most lenders actually want to go on the smallest stream. So if you go for non-collateralized loans, nobody wants to go above 50 lakhs. Sure. And why you don't want to go above 50 lakhs? Because it seems to be the comfort area where people can lend. Now, this has been going on for quite some time. Uh, I think at some point of time there will be enough information, enough uh, track record that will be generated that people will have the ability to come up with new algorithms, new ways of screening sure. and providing this thing. I think uh, there is a movement, there is a start that has been made through fintechs and NBFCs that have uh, mastered the art of at least uh, saying no to bad loans, uh, but most NBFCs and lenders do not know how to find good loans. <laughs> but you're using technology, you are using technology. We are using, using technology, yeah. there are hundreds of people using technology. I think technology without a significant amount of data that is authenticated over a long period of time mm -hmm. still does not give you. So you are using heuristics, you are using talent, you are using a conventional system to deal with a very new area of markets. Uh, and therefore, technology over a period of time has to replace heuristics or people's own interest. Sure. Uh, but uh, technology doesn't have enough data to, uh, on a large scale, to demonstrate how we can do it successfully. We are hopeful that there is enough information now that uh, over next five years, you would see far better flow of capital. For someone who's looking to raise funds, uh, you were just discussing, you know, uh, collateral and how it's not necessarily easily accessible for a lot of small businesses. How should they be approaching raising funds? What are maybe some of the fundamental mistakes small businesses you see are making? What do you want to advise them? Small businesses are of different kinds. So you can be a startup with an ambition of to be a billion dollar company. Mm -hmm. The only product that is available to you is equity. You must always raise equity. To raise equity, you should actually be defining uh, a clear business plan, a business plan that you want to deliver and not a business plan you believe the investor wants to look at. Okay. That's the first thing for any person who's trying to raise equity. Now, if you're a run-off meal, small startup, which is, or a small SME, which is essentially doing the same business, transparency, ethics, uh, showing transparency of how you do your business, uh, being slightly well organized and sharing your data transparently will go a long way in giving people uh, confidence to lend to you continuously. Okay, uh, my last question to you sitting at the beginning of 2020, uh, both personally as well as professionally, what's the rest of the year looking like for you? I will actually take a slight detour on this. Sure. Uh, you must have heard of sustainable development goals. Mm -hmm. uh, by 2030, the world has to actually reimagine itself. Mm -hmm. It has to be a world that, has, that has to be without hunger, without poverty, without inequity. Uh, decade of 2020 is the last decade of action for all of us, for you and me, for everybody. Okay. If we have to reimagine the world, uh, the way we have to act over the next 10 years will determine what the world will look like. Okay. And I would exhort anybody and everybody who is listening to you that here is your opportunity to participate in a decade that will never come back uh, sure. to humanity. So we are trying to reimagine humanity. Uh, Every year, India needs to invest $700 billion in the small businesses, in those people who are actually being left out. Uh, that's a very large amount of money. I was a commissioner in Sustainable Development Commission, where we predicted the world needs $3 trillion every year, $2.5 trillion every year sure. for the next 10 years. Uh, I believe capital is available. What we are lacking is entrepreneurs. We are lacking for spirited up performance, and we are lacking for a lot of people to know that this is a decade for action for all of us. So uh, I think there is an opportunity that is beyond belief coming to those who are small entrepreneurs, those who are creating jobs and livelihoods, uh, that money will come in torrents. You have to just prepare yourself. Uh, be authentic, be real, 
and money will not be your constraint. Okay, that's a fantastic interview, Vineet. Thanks Thank very you, much for your time here on the show. Thank you so much. Thanks. Completely out of time in this episode of Leaders of Tomorrow. If you have any feedback for us, our contact details is up on your screens in just a moment. Do let us know what you thought of tonight's interviews. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.